Hi there, my name is JD Braun. Excited to be here with you for another episode of our Security Best Practices series. Today, we're going to be focusing on our Security Reference Architecture Terraform templates, hardened Databricks deployments from day one in this episode of Terraform Security Chapter. Today, like I mentioned, my name is JD. I'm a senior specialist solutions architect based out of Minneapolis, focused on our platform and security. So before we get into these Terraform templates, want to talk a little bit about our trust center, which is going to have a whole lot of resources not included in this call, including information about in-product security, Databricks security operations, detail on how we approach privacy, as well as links to common resources like our security analysis tool, the security reference architecture templates, best practices, and more. So highly recommend that you visit our trust center. All right, so let's get into it. So a question we get all the time is, how do I know I can deploy workspaces with the Databricks security best practices? It comes up all the time when folks are getting into Databricks for the first time is I wanna deploy Databricks as hardened as possible right off the bat. Our answer is the security reference architecture templates. So we wanna make deploying workspaces with security best practices as easy as possible. So with that, we've gone ahead and published a Git repository of that's inclusive of these best practices, summarized and distributed into Terraform. So a little bit more about these templates. The overall, the most successful Databricks deployments that we see are managed through Terraform. Most firms will be familiar with it as the DevOps tool of choice. And with these, we really tried to approach this as beginning with secure Terraform templates for default security configurations. Of course, there's a number of ways to deploy Databricks. However, there are some common best practices that we wanted to integrate right off the spot. So with this, this is a growing, this is a live repository where we'd love to get your feedback on it. So I'll show you a couple of iterations of how we did this deployment and what best practices are included. But if you see one that's not missing or you want some additional options, alternatives to it, you know, maybe you want to be able to peer to another VPC, maybe you want a transit gateway attachment, maybe you want to support additional private endpoints on Azure, just let us know with get issues and pull requests at Terraform Databricks SRA. So today, while we are going to support all three clouds of Azure, GCP, and AWS, today I'm solely gonna be focusing on AWS itself. So I'll be covering the two different architecture styles that we de can deploy with. And then of course, talk about some of the other Databricks setups that we recommend. All right, so our standard, out of the gate architecture Terraform template is this. Very straightforward, very simple in terms of customizable VPC configurations, a couple of private subnets for the Databricks clusters themselves. We're going to have private link backend connectivity. So that is going to be connections from the data plane to the control plane using VPC endpoints, and then routing all traffic out through the public subnets and into the internet. So while this, Terraform template does include the best practice, some best practices on the Databricks platform side, like private link, CMK, audit logs, et cetera. We have another version of this as well, where we include a network firewall. So in that firewall, I'll show how we limit egress traffic to not allow reaching certain API calls, for example, because data exfiltration is very important. And it's something that we want to take into consideration when people are deploying for the first time. Before we get into the repository and we showcase what this looks like from a Databricks side, I do want to make the caveat that this is a baseline. This is something with the best practices involved. But of course, these networking architectures may not be a one size fits all for every enterprise. So what we highly recommend doing is using this as that foundation layer, taking those Databricks best practices and then looking at how you can integrate into your own network. All right, with that, let's take a look at the repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing slides. That's the most slides we're gonna need for now. And we're gonna take a look at the repo. So you can find it at Terraform Databricks SRA on GitHub. 
each of the clouds will be broken up into its own subfolder. So right now we have a pull request out for Azure, but we do have AWS and GCP both available. So let's go ahead and take a look at AWS. We're gonna go into the TF file. And what you're gonna be initially met with is a readme that talks about all the components that are being included within this Terraform template. We talk about the infrastructure deployment from the Unity catalog assets that are needed, the scope down IAM role for the workspace, as well as those backend private link connectivities. We talk about what happens after the workspace is deployed. What are some of those best practices from a Databricks perspective? We talk about how we do audit and billing, adding service principles, token management, secret management examples, as well as cluster tags and policies and some admin configurations that you can use for your own environment. In here, we'll go through some of the optional deployment configurations. Like I mentioned, some things may not want to be done every single time. Like for example, an audit and billing logs only needs to be set up once. So we have some optional modules that can be called. One specific call out is our security analysis tool which is a general health check on all of your environment security postures backed in to Databricks best practice, which can be enabled. Please take a look at the notes before you enable some of these as some do require cost, such as the network firewall has a incurring cost for how long is up. Last part that we cover is our additional security recommendations and opportunities. These are opportunities that may not be able to be covered within Terraform, but we recommend that you implement into your environment regardless, like backing up assets from control plane in get backed services, recommend regularly starting Databricks clusters, as well as taking a look at the various levels of where your workspaces are gonna be deployed and implementing isolation at the network storage, et cetera layer. All right, so I've gone ahead already and deployed two workspaces using this Terraform template. How to do that, we do a getting started, and then we have an easy to use module where you're gonna put in your various information that you want to customize. Everything from what are the security egress ports that are gonna be allowed, these are the default, but if you need to access any other tooling on a different port, this is where you'd put it. We talk about some of the services that are regional, like our VPC endpoints, and then those optional areas that I talked about before, like IP access lists. These allow lists are best practice, but if you're using front and private link, you may not need it. So we keep it as an optional one. However, each of these is served as a reference baseline. So if you need to take something out, move it around, we highly recommend to do so. And of course, if you like to, go ahead and make something that you think would be generalizable to the greater population, please go ahead and raise that get issue request. And with that, let's take a look at what we deployed. So we take a look at the account console within Databricks. I've deployed two different workspaces. One was my initial and one was my clone. So within the initial one, I've gone ahead and established a firewall so we're gonna see that firewall traffic. I created the Metastore as the first time because there's only one Metastore per region. And then the second one, I did not do a firewall. And then I just passed in the Metastore ID into the parameters within the SRA module. So as easy as if you already have some of these assets existing, don't need to do them again. Another example in the second one, I didn't need to re-enable audit and billing. I already did it in the first. So let's pop into one of these workspaces and see what it looks like from the account console. As you can see in the account console, we're really utilizing our enterprise level security features. We have both storage CMK, which is going to be workspace storage. So the EBS volumes associated with your EC2 instances, as well as the Databricks file system or DBFS root bucket encrypted with a customer managed key as well as our managed services CMK. So this is gonna be various assets in the control plane that are encrypted with a key that you've provided. In addition, with our network, you're going to see that it's a customer managed VPC. So with the subnets, security groups, as well as those private link connectivity. 
Now, again, this is a foundation. If you want to use front end private link connectivity and route your front end user access, that's definitely a possibility. It would just be an additional step to creating this. Now, let's take a look from inside the platform. What does it look like? So I have my firewall. So this was the initial one that I created and I performed two tests. On that initial firewall, I only allowed outbound access to our default Hive Metastore, PyPy, Maven, and CRAN. So what we'd expect is that, hey, you'd be able to pip install, but you're not gonna be able to hit any other egress IPs. So I went ahead and pip installed the Mosaic ML Composer package. And if we look through the logs, it installed just fine onto the cluster. In the second cell, what I did was I wanted to make a call out to IPF, IFY, uh, API site where you can go, it's an API where you can go and get your public IP back. So if I was able to hit this, what I would anticipate is seeing my NAT gateway IP, but it failed out after about a minute. So clearly the traffic is not getting to that public endpoint and it's being dropped at the firewall. Now, if we take a look at what's happening underneath. so. Just for posterity, we want to make sure that it's really following the route it is. I used the AWS Reachability Analyzer to check this. So within the Reachability Analyzer, I can see the path that it's following out from the EC2 instance all the way to the Internet Gateway. So you can see from the instance, routing out through the security group, the knackles, taking the route table, and it's going all the way through the firewall and then out to the IGW. And this was when I just set up EC2 instance and internet gateway. So a very easy path to check, hey, it is following out this. Any outbound traffic that is not Databricks or AWS related with the interface endpoints or gateway endpoints is gonna be going out that firewall. Now in our other example, I do the same test and I was able to download the Mosaic ML Composer package just fine. But then within 0.33 seconds, I got my IP back. So this is clearly going out from the private subnets public to the internet. And you can see that within the reachability analyzer as well. So before we go here, and after we've covered this, I want to show off just the structure of the repo itself to wrap it up. Within the repo, you, after you get through the initial, you'll see the modules. The top level is mainly focused around the AWS assets that are being deployed within the network. And then you're going to see within the account level is where we're going to handle the creation of the UC store, the assignment, the logging configurations, and creating the workspace itself. In the workspace, here's where you're gonna see the security analysis tool gonna to be able to be added and then as other security methods that we recommend as best practices from IP allow list to example secrets to UC storage. So a read only credential for your UC if you have external tables that are located somewhere as well as token management and admin configuration. For example, if you wanted to turn off enable results downloading and areas like that right off the bat. So with that, that summarizes our security reference architecture Terraform template. We're really happy that I'm really happy that you're viewing this video and that you are able to see how we've deployed Databricks Harden from day one. Again, if you see anything that you would like to change or update, please go ahead and raise a Git issue. We'd love to hear with you as well as collaborate with you to continue to make this a generalized hardened deployment that can expedite your path from just signing up at trydatabricks.com to getting a workspace that is hardened and ready for the big time. Again, nice to meet everybody. My name is JD Braun and talk to you on our next video.